because when uh, people saw that the softball field had been lined, I got about 10 challenges to start a game afterwards. <laughs> All I know is we got a couple of All-American catchers in the room and you don't want me on your team. <laughs> Before introducing Linda, I want to take a few minutes to recognize some people in the audience today. First and foremost is John Coles, who's with us up here in front. His wife, Sage, could not be here today. standing in this facility, literally, because they're the ones that got it built and named it after their daughter Jane, and thank you. Chris Bolts got it built. <laughs> you and Chris and John, we'll, we'll take both of that. But, but thanks to John and Sage and his family for all of their support over the years for the Gophers. We're really glad you could be here. Another person I wanted to take a minute to recognize, and she may be in the back of the room, is, is Jean Freeman, our former swim coach and club president. For those who don't know, Jean is a pioneer in Gopher sports history in her own right, and a fabulous friend to many. Uh, there are lots of similarities, I think, between her and Linda, and it's no wonder that they are um, good friends and former colleagues. Thanks also, this just go up. thanks also to Jessica Allister, our new head softball coach at the University of Minnesota, and her staff and team who have been here helping out. We appreciate all that you've done. We're looking forward to many uh, good years ahead. Thanks to the team for, for all of your help today. Jessica, you want to raise your hand? Thank you. recognize Dr. Phil Esten, the CEO of our Alumni Association and former Athletics Department Associate Athletics Director, and, and um, Phil is obviously very integrally involved as the CEO for the alumni group um, with, with all of our former Gopher student-athletes and alums, so thanks, Phil, for being here. And finally, just a brief mention of the high school softball coach of Linda Wells, Ruth Jones, is here. Ruth when it comes to coaching, so Linda McCordy told me she taught you everything she knows. <laughs> I did want to mention that Joel Maturi, our athletics director, um, was very sorry that he couldn't be here today. He is attending um, AD meetings in Dallas, but he sends his regards. Linda was a pioneer in women's sports history at the University of Minnesota from 1973 to 1989. She coached three sports for us, basketball, volleyball, and softball, although softball became the sport that she ultimately focused on. Her teams during that era were highly competitive, despite the fact that they weren't supported at, this, at a similar kind of level as some other programs. And so part of her job was fighting for softball time, or field time, funding. Um, you may have noticed in some of the scrapbooks that you looked at downstairs that some of the teams looked awfully familiar, familiar and that's because the volleyball, softball, and basketball team all wore the same uniform. <laughs> so current go for softball players, I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> Linda's efforts and her advocacy are a large part of why our teams enjoy the success and the support that, she, that they, they have today. As a softball coach, Linda was a three-time Big Ten champ, coach of the year. She took the team to the College World Series, coached a number of All-Americans. Um, she was also competitive in basketball and volleyball, took our volleyball and softball teams into their first official Big Ten play and did quite well there. For some unknown reason, she left us to go to some little school in the West <laughs> in 1989, uh, where, she, where she coached for 16 years as a member of the Softball Hall of Fame there, as well as, as in our M Club Hall of Fame here and a number of other Hall of Fame, Halls of Fame in Minnesota and Arizona. 
She also coached the Greek team in the Olympics in 2002 and 2006, and obviously is very accomplished in her entire career, and we're so appreciative of everything that she's done. This is one impressive woman. I've only had the good fortune to meet Linda in the last few years, and. Um, but I've heard a lot of stories about her from people, and everybody that I've talked to about her, a, a big smile automatically lights up on their face, and they've got fond memories they can call, recall. They've got some funny stories that I'm not allowed to share today. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you that I, that I know enough uh, from having spoken to Linda in the last few years to know that I'm very envious of those of you that got to play for her. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> had a lifelong impact on her former student athletes um, and colleagues at the U. It's amazing to see everyone that's turned out today. We had former uh, team members who flew in from Texas and Utah and, and, and Colorado, I believe, to be here today, and that is a testament to Linda's um, impact that she did make on those folks and the connections that she's kept throughout the many years since she's left Minnesota. And that's what one of the things I find to be most impressive is that Linda still has a strong network of gophers that, that she connects with and talks to and communicates with. And that's truly amazing given that she did leave the university over 20 years ago. And we're conducting a search for a softball coach this spring. I relied on Linda's softball expertise um, to help me throughout that process uh, and with her knowledge of the game and of the softball community. And it was readily apparent to me how fond she still is of the Gophers, how um, invested she continues to be in the successes of our teams and our programs, and that she truly bleeds maroon and gold. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to take this opportunity to introduce our Vice President and Chief of Staff, Kathy Brown. Kathy is a true friend, um, not only to athletics, uh, where she's been of great value to us over many years in, in her position, but also um, does a fabulous job for the university at large. She's a former coach and player herself. Um, but Kathy, I'm looking for you. Right, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hiding in the... Anyway, um, please welcome Kathy Brown. Thank you very much and um, welcome today to this wonderful facility. We ordered up the weather especially for you, Linda. I hope you liked it. Any criticisms or is it going to be okay? <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it looks good. It's just a beautiful day. It's a great day to have a celebration. The U's Outstanding Achievement Award is reserved for graduates of the University of Minnesota and only those graduates who have attained unusual distinction in their chosen profession and who have de demonstrated outstanding achievement and leadership on a community, state, national, or international level. Today we are fortunate to have someone who has satisfied achievement in all of those categories. The outstanding, yeah. Woo! The outstanding, achievement, <laughs> the outstanding achievement Award is the highest recognition the U offers uh, alumni among the nearly 500,000 graduates of the university, fewer than 1,200 have been honored with the Outstanding Achievement Award. So this truly is an exceptional, exceptional honor. All recipients have their names added to the Alumni Wall of Honor at the corner of Washington and Oak Streets, just outside the McNamara Alumni Center. Oh, so this cool. is a very special occasion, and I'm so pleased that so many of you are here. As it turns out, I think Linda and I probably share some common experiences um, based on our age bracket. I compared that a little bit beforehand, and I'm, we're close. Uh, <laughs> even though we've never discussed them. And uh, I'm going to just take a brief story to highlight um, some of the experiences I think some of us have gone through in athletics. Clear back to when I was in sixth grade. And in that year, there were four of us, Steve, Rick, Carla, and myself, who took all comers in softball. <laughs> now, I don't want to overstate my softball experiences because that was truthfully the end of them at sixth grade. <laughs> and the reason is because there wasn't any further opportunities to play. I didn't have an opportunity to play in a high school team or a community league team. And 
Um, fortunately, I had a couple other sports I did have some opportunities in, but that, that was the extent. And so that sixth grade year was a big year for my softball career. And, the, and you know, we never got beat, four of us against all comers. But the boys, Steve went on to have a college scholarship in baseball. Um, the two of them together went on to numerous uh, championship opportunities in summer ball and college and, and high school and so forth. And um, Carl and I had no opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is we really can't thank women like Linda enough for the opportunities they have provided for girls and women in sports. And that can't be on so this wasn't too much ancient history here. And there's other women in the room that I would like to honor in that same regard for all of the opportunities that you have given those of us that have followed you. And it's a tradition that I hope that the young women that are playing today will continue to appreciate. It's an important thing that we continue to keep that uh, tradition alive for those that follow, follow us. So thank you for all you've done for those of us that are recreational softball players, those of us that are high school, collegiate athletes, and even the elite athletes, because your international experience is, is really a special thing. And we're very, very proud of you here at the University of Minnesota, and, and we can't thank you enough. All right. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to be here. I had the opportunity to meet Linda, I think, last year when we were in Arizona. This is one of the uh, better perks of being a dean, that you get to travel to Arizona in January and February and meet, meet some of our amazing alumni. Um, I'm here to just say a few words um, to what is probably one of the most distinguished groups I think I've ever had the opportunity to speak before. I'm really um, very honored to be here with all of you. Many graduates of the University of Minnesota bring honor and distinction to their alma mater and many achieve great personal and professional success and generously serve their communities. Fewer blaze new trails, redefine excellence, inspire the next generation, many of whom are here, and have a game-changing effect upon society. Linda Wells has achieved all of these extraordinary feats, and we are honored to count her as an alumna of the College of Education and Human Development. I was delighted and eager to lend my personal support and full endorsement to the nomination of Linda Wells for the Outstanding Achievement Award. The nomination letter from Joel Maturi and Mary Jo Kane presented a compelling case. The letters of support from a colleague at Arizona State, Michigan State, and from a woman Linda coached and mentored all profile a woman who is an accomplished athlete, a legendary coach, a business entrepreneur, I like this one, a breaker of glass ceilings. Yay. <laughs> a, me a mentor to generations of women and a person of global stature. Linda, we thank you for the honor and distinction your story brings to the University of Minnesota and congratulations. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I want to acknowledge an individual who has spent countless hours behind the scenes organizing this event and making sure that the entire ceremony has gone smoothly. Uh, Kelsey Savoy, who is an executive administrative assistant in the School of Kinesiology, she deserves all the credit. What I want to focus on this afternoon is not all the many richly deserved awards, achievements, and accolades that the prior speakers have told you about when it comes to Linda Wells. It is certainly the case that Linda exemplifies such words and traits as pioneer, trailblazer, and inspirational leader. But what I want to talk about has much more to do with the deeply personal ways that she has touched and continues to touch so many lives both here in Minnesota, around the country, and indeed the globe. Let me share first the depth and the breadth of her impact. Even though I've been at the University of Minnesota for 21 years, this is the first time that I've been involved with helping to host the Outstanding Achievement Award winner. Last spring, when I, my staff and I met with Richard Burbach from the College of Education and Human Development, he told me that these kinds of awards typically get 65, 70 people on a good day. We received RSVPs to be here this afternoon from over 115 people. Woo! And I, I, I think this is particularly 
it really impressive because Linda, as somebody else noted, has not lived in the Twin Cities for the last two decades. <laughs> <laughs> but far beyond the numbers are the personal emails and letters that our department received, all unsolicited, I might add, from many people who could not be with us today, but who felt a need to tell their own stories about how Linda Wells changed their lives. Let me just share a few. This is a quote from Liz Joy, who was an MD and sports medicine faculty member at the University of Utah, and I quote, I am a former player of Linda's, 79 to 82. Linda had a profound impact on my life. She set the bar high, and she encouraged all of us to do our best and then some. To this day, I still have the I love the Gophers key fob that she gave to each of her players when she left. I am now a sports medicine physician where I care for Utah's volleyball players. Linda is certainly deserving of this recognition, and I wish her all the best. This is from Gary, is it Warden, Wardeen? I'm not sure how to say Wardeen and his wife Kathy from La Jolla, whose daughter Erin played for Linda at Arizona State. Gary is currently Vice President for Merrill Lynch Global Wealth Management, and here's what he told us. No doubt Linda Wells epitomizes the ideal set forth in establishing the Outstanding Achievement Award. However, we believe that Linda's truest qualification, which she performed throughout her life and her career, selflessly and with no expectation of personal recognition, was in how she made a positive impact in the lives of those she taught and mentored. Linda Wells profoundly and positively changed the lives of at least two generations of young women, and in no instance could this be more true than in what she did through the lessons that she has taught our daughter. When you include the families of the women Linda and her values affected and helped to shape, it is hard to imagine how the work of one person touched so many people, many of whom she has never met. We are proud to know Linda Wells. Your university, I know, is proud of her also. But she is more than a friend to our family. She is part of our family. And from Chris Carlton, a former player who lives in Minneapolis. <coughs> I was a student athlete of Linda's as a freshman in 1974. She taught me many valuable lessons that I benefit from still today. One I'll never forget is when we qualified for the National Volleyball Tournament, something Minnesota teams didn't do very often back then. But we only, this will be familiar to so many people in this room, this story, but we only had the funds to take 10 athletes, although our team consisted of 12 players. Linda asked if we wanted to leave two players home or if we were each willing to pay $44 so the entire team could make the trip. Now this person knew that she would not be one of the people who was left behind. But here's what she said. I did not have $44 and was tempted to vote to leave them home. But Linda, <laughs> but Linda reinforced the value of the whole team, even if it meant making personal sacrifices. So I voted yes. But then I had to ask her if I could make four $11 payments <laughs> over four months, which she let me do. She said I suspected she fronted me the $44. <laughs> we all made the trip. We didn't get very far, but we understood the importance of being there with an, our entire team to represent the University of Minnesota. I will never forget her or the lessons that she taught me. Finally, from somebody who is here today and who has known Linda for many years, Rayla Allison, a faculty member and lawyer in our sport management program. And Rayla has also been very instrumental in getting this event happening today. So, Lynn, so Rayla, would you come up to the podium, please? In the mid-1970s, Rayla and Linda were both catchers and team captains for the Chicago Ravens of the Women's Professional Softball League, founded by Billie Jean King and Joan, Joan Joyce. Woo! In 1976, they were both traded, and I, I didn't ask why they were traded. <laughs> uh, Linda to St. Louis and Rayla to Connecticut. As somebody who has played and coached with and against Linda Wells, here is what Rayla shared with me this morning. Lots of people talk about injustice. The difference is that Linda time and again worked courageously, even when it took a personal and professional toll to correct that injustice. Let me end by making a personal observation of my own. It is precisely because of her courage that we are all standing here today. Thank you, Linda Wells. Linda and I came to Minnesota in 1972 as graduate assistants in the Department of Physical Education. 
I hadn't planned on Belmar Gunderson, who was our athletic director at the time, being here, so I apologize for the uh, exaggerations I may be entering. <laughs> I ran up by Linda, and this is honestly our recollection. <laughs> we, go, we go to our, our first um, staff meeting with the department, and Belmar gets up and says, is anybody willing to coach women's basketball? And not like you look for a coach now with the national search and uh, intense competition for jobs, but this was who's willing to do it. And ours were the two hands that went up. And after some intense um, negotiations, I'm kidding, of course, on uh, contract, uh, what we entered into was an agreement that we would coach women's basketball, and in return we would be paid an hourly wage based on hours worked. My recollection is four, maybe five dollars an hour, but that, that's I'd be generous, but <laughs> <laughs> but we were we were pleased with that. We were excited by that because we were frankly willing to do it for nothing. We liked basketball that much. And we continue to be pleased with that arrangement because as graduate assistants, we were dirt poor and any extra money helped. But um, about three weeks before the season was over, Belmar called us into her office and said something like, oh my gosh, I never thought you'd spend this many hours coaching. <laughs> it's kind of gone for your, your coaching wages. I still have a chunk, you know, for travel expenses for the team and uh, other playing related expenses, but I can't pay you coaching wages anymore. So three weeks to go, but what are you going to do? I think we did what any coach of a women's sport back then would have done. We completed the season, we took them to the state tournament, and um, they got their room and their meals, and we worked for free. <laughs> but we're happy to do it. We're happy to do it. A lot has changed since then. Um, talking to Linda recently about her career at Minnesota, at Arizona, her co uh, coaching with Team USA, uh, her job as a coach with the Greek team, as a, as a coach with the um, Netherlands national team, she estimates that she's coached some 2,000 women athletes. Wow. And when you think about that number, it, it gives you a feel for how, how big her career has been. And I know that she did much more than coach those players. I know she did more than teach softball skills and softball strategy. I know that she mentored each and every one of the players that went through her programs. And she, initially, she was mentoring in, in the area of academics, because when we started out, there weren't academic advisors or academic tutors. If you had a problem with classes, coach might be the first person you go to for some advice. So she was there for them in that regard. I know she also mentored um, through personal challenges that the players um, had over the years. As a small measure of her impact on those players, I've been at her house in the winter when she's got a stack of Christmas cards from alumni like this. If you ever played for Linda, you never forgot Linda. She's been an amazing um, mentor to the young women. Um, the other thing I really liked about her coaching style, both at Minnesota and ASU, is she did more than teach them softball. She um, taught them the, the importance of community service. And I know both her teams through the years of Minnesota and ASU were involved in, in public service uh, and community service projects. And I thought that was great. Linda um, has also given back to her athletes, to her profession, to the community. And I think, first of all, it's been as a tireless leader in the fight for equal opportunities for players and coaches of women's sports. Uh, thanks to her advocacy um, for women in sports, being a coach of a woman's sport went from being a part-time job, actually it was always a full-time job with part-time pay, it went from being that to being a full-time profession and getting some of the recognition that that deserved. Secondly, Linda's given back as a frequent speaker at schools from the elementary school in Pacific Missouri to universities around the country. She speaks on the subject of girls and women in sports, Title IX, and general motivation. Uh, she also has conducted numerous camps and clinics around the country and uh, still keeps in touch with a number of the kids. I um, mean, they were young girls interested in softball who went through her program and some of their parents. And finally, she's also coached clinics for softball coaches, giving back to her profession in that way on an international level. And um, my recollection is it's been at least eight different countries she's traveled to for that purposes the most bizarre being North Korea. Um, she's done that. So over the course of the 39 years that I've known Linda, she has selflessly met with, evaluated, and offered advice 
to every neighbor, daughter, niece, cousin, or friend of any acquaintance that's ever asked her to do that. She's just always there to lend a hand at something, well, in everything, not just all. <laughs> um, Linda, you've touched so many lives in a positive way, and I know I speak for everyone when I say thank you and congratulations on this award. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Regents, it is my distinct honor to extend the sincere congratulations and gratitude of the University of Minnesota to you upon receiving the Outstanding Achievement Award. As you know, this is the highest non-academic <coughs> award conferred by the University upon dis distinguished alumni. As Regents, we are charged with the welfare and mission of this renowned and beloved, beloved institution we call the University of Minnesota. Our vision must be focused on the decades to come and our mission to discover and deliver a brighter future. Some rare individuals have a similar, similarly transforming effect in the world. Linda Wells, you are such a woman. Linda, by your courage, character, and commitment, you have changed our lives and created a more just and equitable future. Thank you on behalf of a grateful university. Congratulations. Distinguished graduate of the University of Minnesota, President and CEO, Wells Sports Corporation, Tempe, Arizona. Accomplished athlete who became the first and youngest full-time female, female head coach for women's basketball, softball, and volleyball in University of Minnesota history, and a two-time Olympic coach. Legendary mentor whose dedication and passion have helped inspire countless girls and women to excel in youth, collegiate, and Olympic sports, in academics, and in business. Pioneering role model who has transformed individual lives by empowering countless girls and women as they continue to seek equality of opportunity for women in sports and in their lives and careers. And it's signed by Ann Cieslack, Secretary of the Board of Regents, uh, President Robert Brunix, and Chair of the Board of Regents, Clyde Allen. to receive this award. My thanks to the Board of Regents for this uh, confirmation and also to President Burning for his support in the communication for this announcement. My thanks extend to the College of Education, the Department of Athletics, and the All University Committee for their support for this recognition. My thanks to all of you that, unknown to me, wrote letters of support. I wish to um, congratulate all the past winners of this award, and especially I'd like to congratulate Dr. John Larkin, who is also receiving this award in 2010. I look forward to joining the Wall of Honor selections at the McNamara Alumni Center. Mm -hmm. Thank you to uh, Joe Maturik, Regina Sullivan, and the other members of the athletic department who supported this award. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Dr. Jean Kwong, Richard Brombeck from the College of Education and Human Development, and to Mary Jo Kane, to you, Rayla Allison, and to the members of the Tucker Center and the School of Kinesiology. My thanks to you too, Kelsey, back there, uh, for all the arrangements and the staff who worked, invited, and organized to make this weekend one to remember for myself and for my family and for my friends. I'd like to really thank each of you who are here this afternoon. I hope you'll appreciate my feelings that when my name goes up on that wall and as I accept 
this great award today. It is uh, shared with each and every one of you. This is indeed a team effort and a team win. <laughs> the anticipation of this award has flooded me with memories that are truly gold. Thank you for sharing this Skyuma and this Ra Ra Ra. <laughs> my, uh, my brothers and my sister were my first teammates along with the rest of the neighborhood gang. I remember many of your parents and also your grandparents. They were always proud of our accomplishments and I know my grandparents would be proud today. Our families molded our times together around game scores and tournament schedules. My baby sister joined my family when I was in college and together we all combined to be a sport family in action. I've always counted on their support and true to form, they're here today. So please help me uh, recognize my family and especially thank them for their support. My And uh, Jody's back there also. All right. All right. the Olympic Games also. I have a special thank you to the Department of uh, Physical Education and also Belmar Gunderson and Belmar's here. Thank you for giving me the chance to coach here, Belmar. Thank you very much. I hired twice. <laughs> <laughs> See how smart she is? <laughs> In case you didn't hear, she said she hired me twice. <laughs> to Schick, Stoner, Young, all of the professors who were the backbone of my graduate education. Uh, to Robert Serfoss, Dr. Serfoss is here today, my graduate advisor. Yay. And to all the faculty, too numerous to mention, who contributed to my professional development. To all of the women who work together through the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Association and to the countless colleagues who search for ways to advance and administer the programs for women. Minnesota. <laughs> it's the home of General Mills and my players in volleyball, basketball and softball played just like they were poured from a Wheaties box. <laughs> There's really no way to thank you all for the many memories you've contributed to my life and oh, the places we would go. <laughs> the excitement of Title IX, college athletics, and the opportunity to compete, nationals, League Ten championships, I can only say to each of you, thank you. Thank you for playing. Thanks for all those times. Thank you. Thank you to Jean Freeman for remembering how seriously we took ourselves then. <laughs> <laughs> and for taking me seriously enough to come out today. Thank you, Dr. I'd like to thank all of my peer coaches. Steph, Charlie, Anne, thank you very much. To Deb for thinking this was a good idea in the beginning. <laughs> the 70s and 80s were a magical time, filled with Title IX inspiration and perspiration. We were living a dream when the baby money looked big <laughs> and when I got $9,000 to coach three sports on <laughs> There was putting up snow fences as home run fence every year for the state championship softball tournament. There were van stops to adjust the points or sharpen a plug so that we could get the van home. There were spring break trips in mini winnies and I cooked most of the meals so that we could stretch the budget. 
I can imagine what that was. <laughs> <laughs> there was the first that. national championship in volleyball, which was mentioned before, where the team and the staff shared two rooms with one shower. Oh. <laughs> Just wow. reminding you. <laughs> there was a record crowd of 16,000 at Williams Arena one night to watch the USA volleyball team play in exhibition. There was the National Basketball Championship on this campus at both Beerman and Williams Arena, the very last of the women's 16-team tournament. There was the A team, the B team, and the C teams in each sport with the courts and the fields filled with young women eager to play sports and to compete. <coughs> and now you women are teachers and moms and doctors and dentists and engineers. You're here in the cities, you work at NASA, you are in Afghanistan. You're serving our country and our communities everywhere. There are parents who drove, made sandwiches, built concession stands, and sold programs. There were youth coaches and high school ones. You stopped in for some information and became life friends, like Jack and Molly. Hmm. Or who were making their own parallel paths in Minnesota, through the snow and into the hearts and minds of the young people of yesterday and the parents and coaches of today. There was the rest of the staff. The support staff, Kathy, Cindy, Joe, Barb, <laughs> and they worked overtime and underpaid and caught the fever of athletics like a virus that these young women in athletics were spreading around Beerman and Cook and Norris Hall. As for me, I went on eventually to bleed more maroon and gold. <laughs> <laughs> to most of you, I became Where's Waldo. <laughs> to coach other games, but the games of my life that were here, those I played and watched you play, those of you I played with, against, coached with and against, in the end, there are many great and exciting slides that I see in my mind's eye when the night is quiet and the wind is warm when it would be a great day to walk with your cleats across the concrete, <laughs> or get a pickup game together, or gather yourself for the championship game as a gopher. It is you, you, and now this day, it is not the hardware, but what the hardware represents. The scenes of our times, our lives together, in sport and in life. Enjoyed together, remembered forever. It was hard to leave Minnesota. Among the things I've learned about being away, you can always come back. <laughs> you can always bleed maroon and gold. You can always be, as most of us will, a gopher. My hope is for the future of equity, for a female president, and a peaceful world where everyone can live a dream and you can know that your competitors are your friends and that we'll all share a tear and a smile. It is sport. Thank you all for this award and thanks to each of you for sharing the award. The day, this day, and especially the great time it represents. Thank you, one and all. Ra ra ra. For Sky Yuma. Go Ghosts. Woo! My love, my love and my thanks and my friendship to each of you and to you, the you, our Minnesota. Hats off to thee. Thank you.